Hello, welcome to Gospel in Action. In this video, we will learn about the caste system in Hindu religion. We will learn how it originated, what was its purpose, and is it relevant today? We will also see in today's day and age, how Indians have misused this system and are satisfying their sinful desire to divide themselves from others for their own personal benefits. So, without wasting much time, let us dive into the video. If you are a first time visitor, then I request you to please hit that like button to support us with this mission. If the videos are helpful, please subscribe to this channel. Do not miss another video. To know the origins of the caste system, one must study the Purusha Sukta from the Rig Veda, that is the very first of the four Vedas. And I am more than qualified to teach from it because as a kid, I have not only memorized the whole of Purusha Sukta, but have also mastered its pronunciation. Yes, I attended a class called Veda Patanam, which means the study of Vedas for one year when I was in high school. Anyway, Purusha Sukta literally means the doctrine of the spirit or a cosmic man. The doctrine states that the whole universe was was created out of the parts of the body of a single cosmic man, the Purusha, when his body was offered at the primordial sacrifice. Doesn't it seem familiar? According to the Bible, Jesus' body was offered at the primordial sacrifice. Didn't the Bible say that the lamb was slain? from the foundation of the world? Anyway, I would not go into those depths now, but every Hindu must realize that the purpose of all sacrifices in Vedas was only to point them to the ultimate sacrifice that would happen at the center of the earth. And I believe at the center of the timeline of the history of the whole mankind, the timeline has been rightly divided, naming the period before the birth of Jesus Christ as BC, that is before Christ, and the period after the the birth of Christ as AD, that is Anno Domini, which means in the year of our Lord in Latin. The world is now already beginning to destroy this original and incredible naming convention set by early Christians. Now, BC is being converted into BCE, which means before common era. And AD is being converted into CE, which means common era. The most interesting fact is that very few people, even in the Hindu religion, proclaim that Jesus Christ is none other than the Prajapati mentioned in the Vedas. In fact, the Purusha Sukta also states that the Purusha is none other than the Prajapati in the following verse, which I am going to chant first and mention its translation. Prajapati Charati Garbe Ajaya mano bahuda vijayate tasya dira parijananti yonim marichi nam padamichanti vedasa. Do you know what this means? It means this the prajapati moves inside the womb. Though unborn, he is born in different ways. The wise know him to be the origin of the universe. Even the creators desire the positions of the Marichis. Now, Marichi or Marishi was the mind-born son of the Hindu god Brahma. And he is one of the great seven sages named the Saptarishi. Remember, Brahma is one of the three gods that represent the universe apart from Vishnu and Shiva. I'm not going into those details again now, but like I said, even the sages of the Vedas have hints about the ultimate sacrifice that will eventually take place at the center of the earth 
and at the center of the timeline just like the old testament saints of the bible but not with so much clarity now i'm only going to explain the meaning of though unborn he is born in different ways from the verse that i chanted from the rigveda because only this part is of interest given the context of this video. So after the Purusha or Prajapati has been sacrificed along with the universe, four groups of people were born from him. The Brahmins or the learned were born from the head portion of the Purusha or Prajapati. Kshatriyas or the kings were born from his arms. Vaishyas or the merchants were born from his thighs. And the Sudras or the people who are the commoners, peasants, servants, artisans and laborers were born from his feet. There are also the untouchables who are considered the casteless and they are the outcasts of the society. These untouchables were not born from the Purusha directly. But based on the Hindu law codes, the untouchables were the product of a Brahmin mother and a Sudra father. And also, you would be surprised to find out that people belonging to any other religion that fails to recognize the Hindu beliefs, for example, the Islam or Christianity, are also considered the casteless or the untouchables. Anyway, that's a whole another topic. But let us get back to our main topic. Thus, instantaneously, four sects of people were born in any given Hindu society. So, the role of each group has been predefined. The Brahmins are typically the priests who are supposed to have great knowledge in their scriptures, the Vedas. The Kshatriyas are kings, meaning they are the ones who deal with the matters of the state. They are the politicians and ministers of that day. The Vaishyas are the merchants or the businessmen. They are the ones who own businesses and run the trade both within and outside their respective nations. All other people who work for the wages are the Sudras. So the society is ruled by the three highest castes and is run with the help of the Sudras. This was the structure for the society imagined by the wise sages of that time for the society to function with high efficiency. Hence, this is the origin of the caste system, which began with a very good intention. There were only four castes originally, the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and the Sudras. Later, as generations passed, only the Sudras divided among themselves and created a plethora of castes in today's day and age. Over the ages, this caste system has been followed religiously for getting the main purpose on why it was created in the first place. So the Hindus still date believe that whatever way a person is born, that should be the way he should be and live his life. The Bhagavad Gita is also the culprit that preaches this. In fact, if we look at this belief deeply, there is a great reason for why Krishna also said it. They wanted to maintain and run the society efficiently. If everyone wants to become a higher class Brahmin or a politician or a businessman, then it creates an imbalance and there will be a huge supply chain crisis. If everyone wants to consume, who will produce, right? So, caste system is purely maintained for occupational purposes. But these Hindus took this philosophy on occupation and applied it to religion as well. They truly believe that if anyone is born in Hindu religion, then he must die in that religion as a Hindu only. And the same applies to Muslims or Christians or people from any religion. They believe that no one should be converted to any other religion, either by force or will. They are so strong on this belief system because they have convinced themselves that God, even if he exists, he does not communicate with 
man. Even if he communicates, he will not create divisions among people. It is a preconceived notion and they have been taught that way by their agnostic ancestors. And hence, they themselves have become agnostics. In fact, what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 through 39? Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own husband household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The irony is that some Hindus believe Jesus is a yogi but would never want to believe what he said in the Bible. They say that Jesus was good but the people who wrote the Bible were selfish and corrupt and that they have corrupted it by writing all these things that promote and push for divisions among people. Jesus would not have said such things, etc, etc. What can we say to such people who cannot understand the love behind Jesus' words? Well, how can they understand what's written without the Holy Spirit? It is very, very sad indeed. So even if God comes down and speaks to them directly, they wouldn't change unless there is a literal miracle like it happened in my life. As you already know, I was born in a Brahmin family that is from the highest caste in a given Indian society. That is from a family which is highly respected in the society. Now, from the past 10 years, because I chose to leave religion and follow Christ, I was pushed down to the lowest outcast in the society. Now, because such people exist even to this day, that is even in the 21st century, the cunning politicians are taking advantage for their own selfish benefits using caste as a tool to manipulate and control people. And these shameless and dumb people cannot understand the difference between being right and being manipulative. Anyway, let me conclude this video with a few positives from Hindu religion. Though I strongly oppose the religion aspect of Hinduism, because most of it is based on mythology and the rest of it is based on the assumption that the universe itself is God, I concur that the ancient Aryan sages who had written the Vedas were indeed very wise people. They indeed asked genuine questions about God and to some extent God even hinted them about the ultimate sacrifice that was to take place at the center of the earth and at the center of the timeline of human history on several occasions recorded in their root scriptures, the Vedas. However, the truth is hidden deep inside the Vedas. Apart from that, the science that is also hidden inside the Vedas is really unmatched. Even to this day, they knew how things worked and had sophisticated technological ideas, be it in building civilizations, trade between nations, and last but not the least, in medicine. Their knowledge about the human body is far advanced than the current medical scientists of today. That is why I suggest people to go and get the treatment from the genuine Ayurvedic doctors. 
I also suggest them to study their Vedas. The ancient Indians' knowledge in space research was unmatched as well when compared to the space scientists of today. Think about how the early civilizations built the pyramids, the Stonehenge, the rust-free iron pillars or the incredibly engineered temples that stand solidly even to this day. It is mind-boggling. I truly believe that the mankind is losing all that intelligence gradually ever since creation. Anyway, I hope to see you all in the next video on how is the Bible different from the Hindu religion. Until then, stay tuned to Gospel in Action and to know more about me, please find my testimony and my contact details in the description below. Remember, this series is done with a lot of research and preparation. Do you know why? Because God loves you and so do I. Thank you again for watching.